Good afternoon, everyone. This is Megan from GoGPS. And today we're going to be focusing on the GeoTab Drive app. Okay, so before we get started, I'm just gonna make sure that everybody who's attending is able to see my screen and we'll jump right in. Okay, perfect. Uh, if you have any questions during the session, please feel free to just put it in the question section or even in the chat section, and I will be checking that periodically through our, our uh, session today. Um, so this is a live training session. So after this is completed, it'll then go up onto YouTube to be used for training purposes in the future. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, this is going to be for the GeoTab Drive app. Um, to get this app, it is free. You would just have to download it on your smartphone or tablet. It is called GeoTab Drive. In order to gain access to use the app, you do have to have a username and password provided to you through the software. So if you have a software with GoGPS, you can add users into the system and that's how you would set up a driver. So there are other training sessions where I go over on how to set up drivers and stuff like that in the system. Um, so we won't be focusing on that today. This is specifically for drivers on how to use the drive app. Okay. So this screen that we're looking at here is exactly what your drivers will see on their smartphone or tablet. It's going to have a login screen asking for a username, and, um, and then it'll have some further steps. Now, as a brand new driver, you do want to make sure that you hit the options button after you put in your, your username, which will more than likely either be your email address or your first and last name. So you're going to hit the options button, and you have to make sure that you put in your database name. You don't have to worry about the server. Don't, that's, that's optional. That's not a big deal. And even though the database says it's optional, especially being a first time driver, it's not. It is mandatory. You will have to put in your database name. So my database is GoGPS. If you're not sure what your database name is, please contact your administrators of the company, um, of your company, and they will provide that to you. So because I have that information already in there, I'm going to hit next. It's going to ask you for the password. My password is already in here. Um, because I use this app on a regular basis, it will hold my credentials and it will do the same thing for, for your drivers as well, especially if they're using it on their own phone or tablet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit log in and it's going to go ahead and synchronize all my information, all my hours of service, all my DVIRs, and it's going to ask me for my vehicle. Now, if you are with your smartphone or tablet in a parking lot or a yard and there's multiple vehicles for your company there, it will show you a list of vehicles available for you to choose from. Because I'm doing the computer version of this, it's not showing up anything because I don't have location on my computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click inside the box, hit the space button, and then it'll give me a list of all my vehicles. If for some reason your driver is having that problem too, Please make sure, um, as yourself as a driver or as a supervisor um, overseeing this, make sure that their smartphone or tablet has location turned on. That is huge. You're going to need that. Okay. So I'm just going to scroll down here. I'm going to select my vehicle. It's going to synchronize all my logs. I previously had a trailer attached. I don't want um, a, a trailer to be attached, so I'm just going to click my little X here. If you need to add a trailer, you can hit the Attach Trailer button. It'll give you a list of all your trailers set up in the system. Again, that has to be set up on the software side to reflect inside of the application. Okay, so if you're not seeing any trailers in your list, please contact your administrators and ask them to add the trailers into the system. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the X button here because I don't have any trailers. I'm going to hit continue. It's then going to prompt me to attach a shipment. I don't have any shipments that I need to attach. So I'm just going to hit continue. And then it's going to pull up previous logs that have been unclaimed. So I'm the only one who drives my vehicle. So I know that these are all mine. That's not the case with a lot of other companies. Some companies have multiple drivers per vehicle. So whenever this pops up, you want to make sure that you are taking only your logs. And as long as your drivers or yourselves are doing the logs properly for hours of service, you should not have any logs that need to be, um, that, that are unassigned. They should all be properly assigned and um, verified at the end of each day. Okay, so I have to show this while we're doing training just so that if, you know, if you're just blindly going through this, you know not to take it if they're not yours, you'll hit skip. But if they are yours, you're going to then select them and hit assign to me. Okay, this here is just saying your current availability may be affected. Are you sure you want to claim these logs? I do because they are my logs. So I'm going to hit okay. 
All right, and now it's gonna cost you to go ahead and certify the previous inspection for my vehicle and then do a new inspection, okay? So this portion here is called the DVIR. That's the Driver Vehicle Inspection Report. So I'm gonna hit Certify and Inspect. I'm gonna see the previous inspection, which was actually done this morning um, when I did some other training. Um, we can see the location that it happened, what type of inspection it was, um, the asset type, this is a vehicle. Um, it says who was signed off, uh, or sorry, it was signed off by myself, tells me the odometer. I did have a trailer on at that point in time, again, just for testing. Everything is fine since then. So I don't need to add any remarks. I don't need to change anything. I'm gonna hit certify previous inspection and it's gonna automatically put me on duty. So this now gives me some time to go ahead and do my DVIR for my vehicle. So I'm using the defect list, the schedule one truck, tractor and trailer. Uh, depending on your company, you may or may not need that specific um, defect list. If you're unsure as to which one to use, because um, there, there is options for more of them, you can hit a drop down and, and select other ones. I've stop that for my vehicle. I only want this one here. So if you're not sure which one to use, again, please talk to your administrators and they will walk you through or they'll tell you exactly which schedule you need to use. Okay. But for training, I am using the schedule one truck, tractor and trailer. And it gives me a list of all the items that I need to go through. So if I hit air brakes on the right hand side, it'll give me a list of any kind of defects. Okay. Um, we have already set up um, which ones are critical or normal inside of the GoGPS database. If you are currently using this and you do not see a either major or any of them being read, again, please talk to your administrators. They will get in touch with me and I will assist them in setting that up. Uh, that is also something that is done on the software side. Okay, so these here are good. I have no problems with my air brakes, you know, cab, everything is fine there. If there was an issue, um, so if I go down here, let's choose maybe glass or mirror, and there was an issue with, you know, some sort of broken or detached, you know, onto your vehicle's body, but like I could click off here and add a remark, and I have to add a remark. It doesn't give you the option to continue forward unless you make a comment. And all the information that you're putting into here is also going to show up on the software side for your administrators to be able to see later on. Any kind of defect that you have in here will also show up in your log when you go through an inspection. That has to show up, okay? That there's no question about it. You have to put the information in here, okay? So if I don't have any issues, I'm just going to scroll down here. I'm going to choose whether it's a pre-trip or a post-trip. I'm choosing a pre-trip. Most companies only do pre-trips and only once a day, but it's completely up to the company and how they want to um, enforce this going forward. They, they might also choose every time a different driver gets in the vehicle, there has to be a pre-trip done. Um, so if you aren't sure, um, please talk to your administrators. Okay. So we can see here that I've done my pre-trip. I am making sure that I can see the location is good. I have no remarks to add, so that's all fine and dandy. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and click the no major or uh, minor defects found, and it's going to say this vehicle is inspected in accordance with a regulation, then our regulation number, and this is just like your driver signing off at the end of each day uh, on their DVIR logs. This is the electronic signature of your driver, okay, so or of yourself. So you're going to hit yes, and it's going to bring you to your dashboard. Okay, so in here, there's a bunch of things that you're not necessarily going to see. So these extra items down here for US border crossing and stuff like that, geotab, roadside tracker, fuel stuff. If you're interested in any of this stuff, please contact your administrator and then they will get in touch with myself. Um, but as, a, as it stands in the beginning, you're only going to see your HOS, your DVIR, your messages. And then down below, it'll say which vehicle you're assigned to, your inspection, and then your settings. Okay, so we're going to start with the top left and make our way through. All right, so we're going to click on HOS here. All right, so we can see here that my rule set for my vehicle is the seven day cycle one. Okay, the Canada seven day cycle one. Um, if you're not sure what your cycle is, Again, please talk to your administrators and they can assist you with setting that up. That is something that is done on the back end, or sorry, the back side of the software uh, when you set up users, okay? So we can see here, I'm currently on duty, which is great. So 
So you have your off duty, your sleeper birth, your drive status, and your on duty, right? Uh, based off of my rule set, it also has my driving time left, my duty left, my work day left, my cycle um, time left until a 24 hour uh, reset. And then it goes down into my cycle, um, my due cycle recap, and then due exemption. So the system automatically gives you adverse driving conditions and then off duty deferral. There's two extra ones that you can use, which is yard move and personal conveyance. That is based on the company as if you're allowed to use it or not. Okay. Um, if you do not see this um, it, when, when you're logged in as a user, you can talk to your administrators about it. And if they allow it, we would then set it up in the system on the software side to then show up in the app for you. If not, they will not show up. Okay. Right. So then if I go back up here. All right. So, um, so I'm currently showing as on duty. Now, if I'm a driver, I'm going to go ahead and mount my smartphone or tablet and then uh, start driving. The system will automatically knock over to drive status as soon as the vehicle registers that it's being moved, and it will sync up with your uh, GeoTab device that's installed inside of your vehicle as well, okay? Because you're logging into the app, you're assigning yourself to that vehicle, which is then linked to the uh, device, all right? Um, so I'm going to keep everything the way that it is right now. And we're going to continue on in the HOS section to show you the logs and how that information is shown. Okay? So at the top here, we are looking at the status tab. I'm going to go over to the logs on the left-hand side, and it's going to give me um, the last 14 days uh, in the system. So we can see March 26th, which is today's date. Um, we can see I was off duty for quite some time. I did go on duty when I did training earlier this morning, and then I went back off duty. So I am not required to, to monitor my hours of service because of my type of job. However, I do this for training purposes, so that's why my logs are going to look a little bit different from yours, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if I scroll down here, it's also going to show my drive statuses. It's going to show me doing my DDIR, my pre-trip. It was certified for my previous one. It's going to show that I was off duty, um, you know, starting at 1046. So it's going to show all that kind of information. And then it's going to show the vehicle that I'm assigned to. Okay, if I click on it, it'll also show me my starting odometer, my ending odometer. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up here. Now I can choose to go back on different dates. If I click that. We're going to see yesterday I didn't move my vehicle, the day before I didn't move my vehicle, Monday I moved my vehicle, Monday I went into the office. So this would be um, somewhat of a normal day for me. Um, I generally don't get home until after 6 o'clock, but good thing is I'm still within my specific hours um, and I do meet the requirements of, you know, taking two breaks, two 30-minute breaks off during the day, and I have a total of 10 hours off solid uh, in a 24-hour span, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is what your logs will look like. If they have not been verified, they will show up as gray, okay? But as a driver, you should be, when you log off at the end of each day, you should be verifying your logs, and then they turn green like we're seeing here, okay? If there was any kind of violations, they would show up in red. If I was qualifying as a break, so we can see here, a little break, um, personal conveyance or yard move, it would show up as that. And if there's any kind of edit, it would show up as yellow, okay? If I scroll down here, we are going to see all of my drive status um, changes and my on-duty statuses, my off-duties, all that stuff, and all of the locations that I stopped at. Okay. So now, as a driver, if I log in the next morning or I go to log in the next morning and I found out that I forgot to log off-duty at the end of the day, this is where I would edit my log. Okay. So what I would do is I would add a log into the system, I would make sure that the status is off. I would choose my date and time. So in most cases, people um, are done the end of the day. I don't want to pick a time specifically. I'm just going to say, um, do this. We're going to do 8.35. I'm going to hit done. Um, I am for Megan's journey, so my vehicle is Megan's journey. And then you have to make an annotation. So you have to put forgot to log out. OK, or just forgot to log off, something around that sort. You do have to make an annotation. Um, if not, the system will not allow you to do it. Um, and now you're going to go ahead and hit add. 
So if I hit add, it's not going to do anything for me because I was off duty at that point in time, but that's what you're going to want to do. And it will then reflect in here and show that it would, uh, it would then show up as gray being off duty, correcting your log so that, um, you know, going into the next day, you're not still continued to be on duty. So I don't know if I have any in here that I can show as an example. Um, oh, here we go. Perfect. So we're going to do this here. So we can see here, I was on duty. I forgot to log out at a, what day was it, Thursday? Perfect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the exact same thing, and it'll, it'll show you how it's going to look for your drivers. So as a driver, this is how you would adjust your log. Administrators, if you're watching this, um, please enforce this with your drivers. It'll make it a lot easier in the long run. If they're having a problem, you can always make the adjustment on the software side, but your drivers at the end of the day have to accept those logs in order for it to adjust going forward. Okay, so I'm going to hit the add log button here. Um, let me just make sure I was done at 824. Um, so I'm going to hit add log, make sure I hit time. We're going to do 825. So you can't do it at the exact time. You have to hit the minute after, so 825. Hit done, and then I'm going to put forget, forgot to log out. Okay, I'm going to hit add, and then there's my adjustment. So see how it's green here, and then I have some edited logs here, and then I have my gray strip here. That's because I just made that adjustment. Now if I go to Friday, same thing, it's gray because it's the adjustment. And then the next day, gray, right? Until I go back to on duty and then drive, then on duty, so on and so forth. Okay, so that as a driver, if you forget to log out, that is how you're going to do that step. If you're not sure, you're not comfortable, please feel free to contact your administrator. Um, and then you can also contact myself <clears throat> or support, support team and we'll be happy to walk you through that as well. Okay, perfect. So I'm just gonna continue on. So we, we know what the logs look like. Um, I'm not gonna verify them right from here. I'm gonna wait until I show you how to log out properly to then verify those logs. So I'm gonna hit the options button right now and it just goes in and shows you the information for this vehicle and the driver. So it has the current driver, uh, first and last name and the uh, credentials to log in. So like my username, uh, what time zone I belong to, what my home terminal is, my rule set, I am Canada seven day cycle one. Um, if you are set to that and you don't have the option to change it, that's fine. If you have the ability to change it, you can always click on it, but that is something on the administrative side for them to decide whether or not you can or not. And then the start of day is always 12 a.m. That's not going to change. That's how it's always set up. Okay. So now that that's done, I'm going to hit the three bars at the far left-hand corner. I'm going to choose the uh, dashboard again, and I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, Go down to the um, inspection mode here, and we're gonna. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So, as a driver, when you go through an inspection, you're going to hit inspection, and then it's gonna ask you for a four-digit uh, pin. Okay, it could be any four. You just need to remember it for that specific point in time. Okay, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. And I'm going to hit set pin. It's going to ask me for it again. One, two, three, four. And what this is, is an extra layer of security. Okay. So this way, the inspector, once they're done taking a look at your hours of service and your DDIR, stuff like that, they don't have the option to then go back out and take a look at more information that they don't necessarily need to see. Okay. So when you go into inspection mode, it allows your inspector to go ahead and take a look at your logs, but it's not going to hand over any kind of violations on a solar platter. It makes the inspector go through your logs and actually work to find out whether or not you have been over on your hours or anything like that. Okay. Um, so for the inspection mode, we have HOS at the top here, and then we have DVIR. This portion here where it says transfer, enter officer code or comments optional, um, this is, and, and same thing with the email and the web service, as of right now, this is for U.S. only. Um, the officer will put in their information if they want to then export the information into an email or web service. It is not set up in Canada as of yet. This is not being rolled out until June or July 2021, so just be you know, aware of that. 
if the officer wants this information, um, they can contact your administrator. So you will have to provide their email address or a phone number to your administrator for them to go ahead and pull that information for them. Uh, your administrators, if you're on this session and you're hearing this, um, you will have to provide that to the inspector. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, please feel free to contact uh, GoGPS, either myself or our support team, and we can walk you through how to transfer that data to them, okay? Um, but as right now, we're just gonna do it as a manual inspection for your uh, HOS. They're gonna hit the compliance print, and they're gonna be able to go back 14 days, just like yourself. But again, they're not gonna see any kind of violation. They're just gonna see your, your logs straight up, no problem. If there's any kind of annotations, they're going to see that. So make sure that you are, you know, behaving yourself when you're putting in comments into the system, because you will be able to see that in here as well. Okay, so we can see here the recording date, uh, the current date, you know, time zone, like the carrier, ELD provider, uh, the driver name, my rule set, all that kind of information is all added in here. Um, you will require to put in your driver's license number and stuff like that on the software side so that it reflects in here as well. So just remember that. Um, so then here are my logs for today so far. This one here is still unverified because it is right now. So the inspector knows that, he understands that. If he goes back and he sees unverified logs, he's not going to be, or sorry, they are not gonna be happy about that. Your logs should be verified every single day. Um, and, and there's more concern as to, well, why isn't it verified that they're gonna dig into, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, so we can see here that I had my, uh, uh, my pre-trip shows that I made a, uh, uh, I marked a, a pre-trip as safe because I had a previous issue with the trailer. Um, there was a tire thread, it was low thread, okay? Um, and then it shows me my, my certifying it, my logging off. I logged back in this afternoon right now with you guys. Um, and, uh, and then it goes up until right now, okay? So it has all that kind of information. Do I have any unassigned logs? No. Do I have any malfunctions? No, that's perfect. That's what they're, they're gonna wanna see, okay? So they can go ahead and hit the back button and check back on other dates. So I'm gonna go back to Thursday because I know I made the adjustments on Thursday. So there it is, they can see green is good. There's edited logs here and then there's unverified. So they're not gonna like that. So we should always have verified logs. Okay. All right. So once they're done looking at your um, compliance, they can hit uh, for your HOS, they can hit the back button and then they'll choose your DVIR. They're going to review your DVIR that was completed, making sure that, you know, if there's any defects, they want to know what they are. And then they can also review what schedule or what defect list you completed. So I did the schedule one truck, tractor, and trailer, and then it shows all the items that I went through. So again, if there was a defect, it would tell you the defect and what the annotation was in here. Okay. All right, so if the inspector is done with your um, with the inspection, they're gonna click the exit button, and this is where you're gonna need to put that four-digit code in again. Okay. If not, um, if for some reason they can hit log out, it'll log them out of the system. It will not allow them to go back to see any other information. Okay, so I'm gonna put my code in, I'm gonna hit continue. I'm back on my screen and I'm gonna go ahead and continue on my day, okay? Now, throughout the day, depending on what your rule set is, you do have to take specific breaks. Um, and that's the only time that you're really gonna to have to hit the off button, except for at the end of your day. So I'm just gonna hit the off button right now. Um, just to show you, it's gonna start doing my restoration and it'll do a countdown. Now, once this gets to one minute, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to on duty manually, which again, you don't have to do unless that's you're taking a break and then you're going back on duty, then sure, go for it. If you're going for a break and then you're driving right afterwards, the system will automatically switch it over for you, okay? Because it's going to register that the vehicle is moving. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm just gonna let this run for a few here and show you that there is a view cycle recap. So it shows me my cycle recap available for tomorrow. It shows me my for today and then my total. Okay, so I don't have a lot going on here. Yours will look a lot different just because you guys are using this on a regular basis. I'm only using this for training. Okay. Um, I think that's for the most part, that's um, all I have here to show. Um, oh, right, messages. So if I click on the dashboard here and I go to messages, you can um, send messages back and forth with your administrative team or administrative team, you can send messages to your drivers. 
Um, so you can see any in the section, you'll see any messages that are being sent to the driver, any messages that I have sent, or I can compose one. Okay, this will then get sent to the software side, and then an administrator can respond back. Okay, so it's a pretty neat tool. So I'll just go back here. I'm going to go to the hours of service. All right, perfect. So now I'm sitting at one minute of rest duration. So if I go ahead and manually choose to go back on duty, the system is smart enough to prompt me and let me know, hey, your minimum break is 30 minutes. Would you like to change your status? Because it's, it's not going to help me if I go back on duty right now. Okay, so I, I should take, always take my 30 minutes straight and then I can go back on duty or I can drive. So I do not want to change my status. I want to stay off duty because I'm going to go ahead and sign off for the day. This is going to be it for me. Okay? And the way that you do that is at the end of your day, once you've done driving, um, all your logs and everything are done, you're going to hit the off duty button. Okay, so I'm already off duty. And then I'm going to choose my name at the top right corner and I'm going to select to, to log out. Okay, so now it's going to ask me to verify. So these are some logs from today. All right, these are the logs from the, the 19th that I made uh, adjustments to because I forgot to log out. So you can see that annotation there. I'm going to verify all these days because, again, I know that they are mine, they are true. So I'm going to hit verify all days. It's then going to ask you to certify. So here's your electronic signature again saying, I hereby certify that all my data entries and my records of duty status for each listed 24 hour period are true and correct. I'm going to hit agree, and then it's going to log me out of the app. And that's it. Nice and easy. So again, the system is going to hold on to your username and password. Um, if it's a different driver, you can change out the username and then continue on the steps. As a brand new driver, you do have to make sure that you are selecting options and putting in your database name or it will not work correctly. Okay. So I'm just going to check to see if there's any questions in here. I've been checking it as we go along, but I just want to open it up. We have about two more minutes here, um, so I can leave the session open to see if there's any questions. If not, I'm going to go ahead and close it up. Um, but that, for the most part, is the DVIR and HOS for the Drive app. Okay. All right, so it looks like there's no questions as of right now, which is great. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining this afternoon. If you have any questions, please feel free to email training at gogps.com, or you can um, email service at gogps.com, 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 and myself or one of my team members would be happy to assist you. Um, and again, if there's anything, just let us know. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a great day.